Hey everyone, the fly I'm gonna be tying for you today is my Honey Badger Sculpin. This is a, a jig streamer. Uh, it's really become my go-to jig streamer. I love this pattern. It's a real fish catcher. Um, what I've done is I've incorporated two things that I really love. I love uh, zonker strips and uh, I love polar chenille and I married the two together and I just come up with a really effective pattern. I've caught a ton of fish on it this year. So I'm gonna tie one up in the vise for you here. This is olive. I tie it in a couple other colors too. I'll show you at the end. Uh, and I'll also talk about how I fish it. Um, this is a fun tie. It's just that if you take your time and you really uh, slowly work your way through the process, uh, you'll keep the fly nice and clean looking. So let's get one started for you. So the hook I'm gonna be using is a size eight Hannock 400. You can use whatever size eight you like. I just really like Hannock. Uh, you can tie this in a 10. What I would suggest is using a wide gap 10 because that wide gap 10 is gonna have about the same gap as the size eight. So the first thing we want to do is uh, we're gonna be using an inverted bead. And uh, the inverted bead, it's a four millimeter, and I tie these very heavy, and I'll tell you why at the end of the video. But um, the inverted bead actually has a really large hole, so we have to give something for it to grab onto because we're gonna super glue it. So we have to put a little thread here at the eye. So just build up a little thread here. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our inverted bead and we're gonna go ahead and put it on, but we're not gonna set it because we need to put our zonker strip. So once again, it is a inverted four millimeter tungsten in black nickel. I use black nickel for the olive bug. So the next thing is we're gonna take our micro pine squirrel zonker strip in olive, and this is key. It needs to be a micro pine squirrel. If you use a traditional zonker strip, they're gonna be far too large. So this is a really small streamer. It's about two and a half to two inches long. So the micro pine squirrel works awesome. Uh, so what we wanna do is we wanna prep this. So if you look at it, if you stroke it one way, everything goes with the grain. If you go the other way, it goes against the grain. So we want it going with the grain. That's going to be our tail. So let's just take a look at this, okay? And you can see here the end, it's kind of been cut off bluntly because I've been using this. So what I do is I'll take this and I'll prep the end of it. So I'll just split the hairs a little and then I'll take my scissors and I'll cut it off at an angle. And what you, what you have is you just have this really good looking tail now at the end, okay? So we, what we wanna do now is we're gonna take our hook and we want our tail about two hook shanks in length. Once again, the fly is gonna be about two and a half inches long. That's how I like to start them out with. If I need it shorter, I always carry a pair of small scissors on the stream with me. You can always cut it on the stream. So I'll go down to two inches. So I just kind of eyeball it there. Let's split the, high, the hair on the hide a little. Now we're gonna take our hook. We're gonna find that center of the hide. Go ahead and poke it through. And you can see that I centered it. Now go ahead and push everything towards the head. And the reason we're doing that is because we want to put it in the vise. And if you push everything towards the head, you won't capture any of the hair in the jaws of the vise. So go ahead and slip it back, get it out of the way. Now this is these little steps you got to take to keep this fly, fly clean. So just wet your fingers and just stroke the hair back, get it out of the way, okay? Now what we want to do is we want to Put some super glue up here on the thread. Just put a generous amount. We're gonna flip the hook over and go ahead and move that bead up. And just pull on it, make sure it's even and centered. And you can see that when we put that thread on there, it gives something for that bead to grab onto and it's not going anywhere. 
So the thread we're using, this is an Olive Dunn 80 Uni. You can use whatever olive thread you like. I just use a lot of Uni, so. And you can use a thicker thread if you like as well. Just go ahead and start it behind the bead. Now we're just gonna take the thread down. And you wanna take your thread and you don't stop right there at the end where people traditionally stop. I like going down the curve of the hook just a little because what it does, it helps with, uh, it, it doesn't foul around the hook as much. So let's just go down the curve a little bit. Okay, go ahead and flip it over. Now, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna tie this in loosely. Just go ahead and do your best to, to split the hair to find that hide. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you wanna keep it clean, okay? So make one loose wrap, and once it's around, pull up. Don't pull down, you wanna pull up because that's gonna prevent it from pulling and twisting the zonker strip around. So we're making two loose wraps, and then we're gonna look, and we're gonna make sure it's even. Now I'm gonna pull it this way. So we're gonna pull it up, and you can see that that's even with the hook shank. So it's really exactly where I want it. So once again, this is the time consuming part, just in making sure that everything is in place and we're keeping it clean. So go ahead and advance the thread up. For the next step, we're gonna be using Hairline. It's a medium UV brown olive polar chenille in medium, that's key. Go and take about, uh, about a five or six inch strip and you are gonna have some waste at the end, but I'd rather cut a strip off. And the reason is because we're gonna twist this around by hand. We don't wanna use the rotary because if I use the rotary, you're gonna see what's gonna happen. This starts flopping all around and it gets in the way. So if we're twisting it by hand, it's gonna be a lot cleaner and we're not gonna capture any of this pine squirrel in it. So let's go ahead and capture this behind the bead. So I twisted my thread, I spun it counterclockwise to it so it jumped backwards to grab it. So we're just gonna wrap this down right to the base, advance the thread back up. Get a couple of these flyers out of the way. And the reason being is we're just gonna put a little super glue on. So let's take some super glue and just dab the top of the hook. And it's just gonna make the fly a little bit more durable. Stroke these out, make sure that they're uh, protruding and not matted up next to the um, to the hook shank. So we're just making sure that everything is in place. Okay, make one wrap right there at the base. Looks good. And now we're just gonna advance this up. And make sure that these fibers don't get matted. So every now and then you can kinda stroke them a little bit. And you see how that zonker strip gets in the way and that's why we wanna twist this by hand. Now, right here at the end, we're going to go ahead and tie it off. Cut it. And you can see that I left about a bodkin's width of space. I didn't take it all the way to the bead because you'll see why here in a second. Well, because we're going to be making the head. So we need a little bit more room at the bead. So now this, you can see you got fibers going this way and fibers going that way. What we wanna do, this is gonna be the bottom of the fly. So we wanna take these fibers and we wanna stroke them down. So we wanna to try to get as many that we're pointing up to go down. And you, when you stroke them pretty hard, most everything goes down. If not, you just kinda of give it a little bit of a haircut. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay this up there. but. What I like to do is, you're gonna see here, I take some super glue, and this is where you just gotta really, once again, take your time. 
Just we're going to dab some super glue on top. Now take your bodkin. So we're going to take our zonker strip. We're going to pull it forward. And then from the rear going forward, we're just going to press. And when you do it this way, when you use the bodkin and you actually stick it through the, the hair, it, none of the hair is going to mat down and get caught in the super glue. So it's just a really clean way to do it. And everything is just locked in and rock solid here. So now we're going to take some of these hairs, these fibers, and we're going to stroke them backwards, but go in front of the hook eye. So, I mean, I'm going a good, you know, couple, you know, half inch almost. And I'm grabbing all these, and now I'm going to do a loose wrap, and then we're just going to pull straight down. And you can see that we're really, we've locked that in place. And you don't have to do a bunch of turns just because we've super glued that in. Go ahead and cut that off. Save these pieces and I'll show you why. So you're just gonna, you're gonna, as you tie these, you're gonna get a lot of these little strips and we're gonna show you why here in a minute. Now, go ahead and clean this up. Just kind of flatten that up. So it looks really good now. So for the next step, we're gonna flip it back over here and we're gonna take red crystal, or this is red flashaboo. Take a couple strands out. Now you can use red crystal flash and what we're going to do is we're going to put some gills in, a la Lefty's Deceiver. We're going to double them. So we're taking two strips. We're going to double it, and then we're going to double it again. Put it around your thread. Take it to the top, and go ahead and tie it in. Just eyeball it. I do about a hook shank in length. Cut it. now we have our red gills there. So for the next step, go ahead and clean that up. We're just going to make a dubbing loop. So we're going to double our thread, put on the cradle there, take your dubbing tool. Now, remember I said you've got a bunch of, uh, a bunch of these little pieces you've cut off. So this is about an inch in length here. So we're still taking that pine squirrel and we're gonna put it in the dubbing loop and we're gonna build the head of the fly there. So go ahead and take this and put it in your clip. Cut it. Now, when you put it in the loop, don't put it up towards the head of the fly because once you start spinning it on the dubbing tool, it's going to get hung up on the fly. So go ahead and, you know, put it down. Give it yourself plenty of room here to spin it. Now, once I put it in, you know, I might pull some down just to kind of put them in place exactly where I want them. You can see. And now we're going to go ahead and spin it. So we have a nice, generous amount there. I strum it like a guitar to get all those loose fibers off. Take your thread off the cradle. And now this is the part where you just simply have to take your time. So once we get to the point where we, the hair is just going to start touching the fly, we're going to stroke it back. So we're going to preen all this back the best way you can. And just slowly take your time because this is where you can really mess the fly up if you just don't take your time. So just make sure it's you're turning and preening and if one is going in front of the other. So your, your wrap is going in front of the last wrap. Just keep preening and turning. Preening and turning. And I use it all. So it's about an inch that I use. Get the thread up. It's easier once you, if your thread is hanging down, just 
just roll it up to get it closer to the head of the fly and it's much easier to um, to wrap. Okay, so you can see it's a little messy here in the front. So let's preen this back. And you can see really easy there. So now, like I do all flies, we're gonna take a little super glue, put it on the thread, take a couple wraps. And you only have to do about three or four whip finishes. And there's your finished, well, almost finished honey badger. For the last thing is I will take a dubbing brush and I like to stroke everything backwards. If you have some polar chenille in there, it'll kind of loosen it up and you see the red gills, they start flaring out kind of underneath and it looks really good. Now, this fly is slightly long, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split the hairs here. I'll take my scissors and I'll cut it off at an angle. And that looks really nice. So there is your honey badger sculpin right there. It's a really, really super effective jig streamer. So how do I fish this? So uh, I love fishing it on a Euro rig. Um, if you know anything about sculpins, what, what's really interesting, they're really interesting creatures. Sculpins don't have swim bladders. So they don't swim like other bait fish through the column. They actually are hard on the bottom. And when you, they actually hop along the bottom. And that's why I, weight this so heavily. So um, this uh, and this inverted B, what I really love about it is it it gets everything towards the eye of the hook so you can use the whole hook shank and really build this head up. And also the jigging action, because the weight is, is distributed right here, you actually get this downward jigging action, which is really cool. So, so I cast upstream and I'll just do a little six inch jigging motion and this thing hops right on the bottom, up and down, just like a sculpin. Um, and what's really cool is you get tons of movement out of this fly with very little movement from the rod tip. So that enables you to keep the fly in the strike zone. And sometimes, uh, you know, trout like the food to come to them. So when you have a big, nice piece of protein like this coming through their feeding zone, it's pretty hard for them to pass up. So... Um, you know, I really suggest if you don't uh, incorporate jig streamers in, uh, in your uh, Euro tool bag, uh, you should definitely do it because um, it's exciting. You get some really good days out there. So this is the olive version. I also tie it in black. This is a great off-color uh, version of the Honey Badger Sculpin. And uh, I also tie it in a natural uh, color as well right there. There is the natural version. This natural really works well, but I would say day in and day out, uh, my go-to color is olive. So there you go. There's the honey badger sculpin. I really, really hope you put this in your box. I think if you do, you find a place for it, uh, you're going to be really happy with the results. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'm happy to help you out. Uh, if you liked it, I appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up. And as always, tight lines, everybody. I'll talk to you later.